if someone just walked up to the soil and said, oh, that's just, you know, some dirt, it'd be like going and looking at the ocean and saying, oh, look at that big bucket of water. Soil is a super organism, uh, meaning that uh, it's alive, uh, it's teeming with life, teeming with diversity, um, much similar to our own bodies. You know, I mean, your, your own body, 70% of the cells in your body are actually bacteria. So, you know, theoretically, we're more bacteria than what we are even human. World Watch ca calls soil the quiet crisis of the 21st century. So we are, um, unbeknownst to the vast majority of people, seriously eroding, not only losing soil to, um, to erosion, that's the most visible thing, but we're actually t losing organic matter. We're killing organic matter in the soil. And for people who don't know, again, you have to just think about it. If, just imagine that you're a microorganism or an earthworm living in the soil and someone dumps millions of pounds of fer either fertilizer, which you intuitively might not seem like a bad thing, meaning it's several chemicals, dumps you know, intense concentrations of these three chemicals on you, and then pours herbicides and pesticides on, which are biocides. They're designed to kill things. Anybody hear that and think we're going to end up with more organic matter in the soil? So we're, we're killing organic matter in the soil, and we're losing it due to mechanical loss of soil erosion. And, um, most of the consensus reports are that we're losing about a half a percent a year globally. Globally, so it's, this is not an insignificant thing. As soon as you start killing the organisms with these inorganic fertilizers, with these salts, with these toxic chemicals, you just go downhill faster. You destroy more and more of the biology, more and more quickly, until you're really in a system that you have no choice but to use those inorganic fertilizers, you have to. And you start to see effects on water quality because all of those inorganic fertilizers are highly leachable. Oh, we start seeing rivers and lakes and streams having horrible problems and we have no good water to drink. Or it starts costing an incredible amount of money to buy the drinking water that tastes okay. So it's having far reaching consequences in our whole society Human health is definitely very much involved. Well, animal health is involved. If the plants that you're eating don't contain the nutrients to keep your animals healthy, to keep you healthy, our health is suffering. So can we reverse all of this process? How do you make those organisms and get them back into the soil? And it's fairly simple. We go back to what was described in the Roman Empire and we make really good compost that's got all these organisms in it. Our early results show that a very thin layer of compost, which I spread with that machine, the compost spreader, improved biomass and, and had all these benefits. There was no downside to it. So now I'm very excited about making my own compost. This, this wood chips were all from uh, trimming the roads coming in. So I chipped the woody debris from road maintenance. Uh, cow manure is uh, right now we're importing it, but over time, if we develop our dairy idea, we, this is a great place to take cow manure, wood chips, and then all the weeds that we harvest, and the coyote bush, things like that that are rich in nitrogen, and combine them and create compost, which is a soil amendment, which we can then put back out on the landscape. Up until now, the, the sad truth is I actually used to take the weed seeds to the dump and I would call the dump and say I have a noxious weed load and then they would dig a pit and then we would bury them. This is a much better solution in terms of taking nutrients that I grew on my ranch and putting them back into the system. So now we're talking about nutrient management rather than externalizing a problem and burning fossil fuels doing it. By being good stewards of the land, increasing our organic matter in our soil, we're producing more food, we're producing more grass, and we're sequestering carbon at the same time. So this is fava beans, and what I'm showing is, see all these little nodules? This one in particular right here, I smash that and the little pink stuff. These are nitrogen fixing nodules, meaning they're fixing atmospheric nitrogen and making it plant available nitrogen. So all those little nodules working to pull atmospheric nitrogen and make it plant available. So this is 
this is what we want to see. This is why you plant a cover crop. And fava beans are known as, as one of the real successful cover crop species. Carbon on and in the soil is the key to water. If we're interested in water, we have to be interested in carbon. And soil carbon is in effect the keystone of all of our ecosystem services that come from land, from terrestrial, um, our terrestrial biosphere. So that's why the life in the soil is so important and why mulch is so key because mulch isn't just holding in, you know, the moisture. It's also uh, sequestering carbon and, and converting, um, helping plants convert CO2 into humus and, um, and also creating these conditions for all kinds of teeming communities of microorganisms that maintain that stability. It's key, and once you learn this stuff, you never want to spray a chemical on the land again. I love that expression, the universe beneath our feet. And it just brings to mind looking up into the night sky and seeing countless stars, and that there's, there's a whole world out there that's just unimaginably big. So too are the microbes in the soil food web. Beneath our feet, everywhere we walk on soil, in every teaspoon are billions of interacting and interrelating microbes, and they are the source and the creation of fertility in soil. They are what allow plants to grow. So clearly, if there was no soil food web, in my mind, we would not have plants. If we had no plants, that wouldn't just knock out the vegetarians in the world, it would knock out all of us, including the cows and the pigs and the goats and the chickens too. Um, every person has to realize that the way they're living is either taking something out or taking less out or actually putting something back. So whether it be, um, you know, let's say promoting soil fertility by eating organic food or just doing a little composting yourself at home or growing a little something, all these little things, I think it does relate to each person, you know. And, and ultimately, um, if you go all the way to climate change, and the issue of carbon sequestration in the soil, which I think um, is an amazing next chapter in people's awareness of the soil. You can see that anything you do that increases soil fertility is actually a small piece of reversing climate change. And I think there is general um, hope that um, if enough of the world move, moves in an organic direction and we begin adding more organic matter to the soil, it actually could make a measurable difference in the trajectory of climate change, which is a big thing to say but it's also a really beautiful prospect. Well, I think, I think right now the opportunities to learn are manifold. They're everywhere. I mean, there are opportunities everywhere. You know, 30 years ago, it wasn't so easy to find a place to learn this stuff. But today, there are, there are agroforestry departments in almost every, every ag or, or, or forestry school. Um, there are permaculture institutes all over the planet. Um, there's organic farming happening everywhere. Virtually every country has, has an organic farming movement. Um, so the opportunities are, are significant. There are community gardens happening everywhere. Farmers markets everywhere. Um, there are many, many, many opportunities to engage. Um, and anywhere there's a piece of ground, anywhere there's a piece of ground, you have the potential to engage in this process. So go for it. <laughs>